arrow of time. Fortify said that time is continuously flowing in one direction, from the past to the future. Well, this probably sounds like a silly science fact that is actually common knowledge. However, what if I said that this is actually one of the most important issues of modern physics of our time? And successfully unraveling the mysteries of the era of time could get you a Nobel Prize. Let's take some time to ponder this issue for a little bit. Why can we only remember our past but not the future? Why does time flow? In the direction of the universe's expansion, and not to its some more compacted universe. And the most important question: Why does time flow in the direction of a higher entropy state, and therefore to its the depth of our universe? According to the laws of physics, time should not inherently have a preferred direction. There simply should not be a distinction between past. And the future, all mathematical equations ranging from the subatomic world of quantum mechanics to scales of those of general relativity, work both from past to future and from future to past. For instance, in relativity, time can be seen as simply another dimension of space. Yet there is an undeniable distinction: all three dimensions of space. Give us a significant amount of freedom by allowing types of motion. In the first, you can move forward and backwards. In the second, from one side to the other, and in the third, up and down. So then, why does time, unlike space, seem to drag us with it in a single direction? Why is there an arrow of time? Scientists use the term "arrow of time" to refer to the idea that time always moves forward. And at least for us, there is no way to wind it backwards. There are actually various types of arrows of time. Stephen Hawking, for that instance, recognizes the following three: the thermodynamic time arrow, which points. To its a higher entropy state, the cosmological time arrow, which points in the direction of universe's expansion, and the psychological time arrow, which is the arrow that describes how we humans, as conscious beings, feel time elapse from the past to the future. In his book *A Brief History of Time*, Hawking explains how, by using the no-boundary condition. And the weak anthropic principle, we can explain mathematically how the three of them point towards the same direction, and therefore form a single fundamental time arrow. Nonetheless, let's stick with the first variant of the arrow of time for a while. What exactly is entropy, and how does it relate to the future and to the depth of our universe? Entropy arises from the famous second law of thermodynamics, which states that the state of entropy of the entire universe, as an isolated system, will always increase over time. Entropy is usually defined as the amount of disorder or randomness. The higher the amount of disorder, the more entropy a system holds. If we think about it this way, it isn't illogical to assume the entropy of the universe would be high. There is only one way, or at best, a few ways for things to be arranged in an organized way. However, there are nearly infinite other ways for those same things to be arranged in a not so neat manner. In simple terms of probability. It's more likely for the atoms that make up your body to be in front of the millions of millions of disorganized states, rather than in front of the few organized states. 
Processes that don't increase the entropy of the universe require work to be done in opposition to the disorder. These processes, however, are almost entirely impossible to achieve, since the very act of putting one system in order requires other systems to become disordered. For example, the act of ordering your messy room would reduce entropy. But ordering your room requires energy. This energy most likely came from food, which is made up of large and therefore highly ordered molecules. However, as you digested them, in order to take energy from them, they broke down into smaller pieces, hence increasing entropy. Now, as mentioned earlier, the laws of physics don't have a preferred direction of time. This means that time has a symmetry, in the sense that the past and the future are not differentiated by the laws of physics. Quite interestingly, those laws don't even require time to flow. Once again, according to physics, time should be just like any other dimension of space. However, there is a significant exception to this, the second law of thermodynamics. As we also mentioned earlier, entropy always increases with time, which means that the second law of thermodynamics breaks the symmetry previously established by all the laws of physics by dictating a direction of time. We know that the universe is constantly expanding as galaxies race away from each other. This logically means that they were once more closely clustered together. We know that entropy was lower in the past because we can trace the positions of galaxies and the particles they contain back and calculate a much denser and ordered arrangement. In fact, an incredibly and unbelievably low entropy arrangement. That would be singularity or simply the Big Bang that marks the beginning of the cosmos as we know it. As mentioned earlier, low entropy arrangements either stay constant or increase over time. Therefore, considering the universe started in such an orderly way, it makes sense for entropy to increase in what we now think of as the forward direction of time in our cosmos. This is one of the few arguments for the direction of the arrow of time. If we think of time as a series of instances ruled by the laws of physics, then we can break the symmetry in the direction of time. If one of those slices has a very unusual and orderly arrangement, in this case, the singularity of the Big Bang. But then, what caused this initial special arrangement with a ridiculously low amount of entropy? The answer to this is unknown. Maybe whoever is watching this video could give an answer to it in the future. The fact that the flow of time can be explained with the second law of thermodynamics by an increasingly higher amount of entropy does not explain why the thermodynamic time arrow is somehow connected to our sense of the flow of time. Why do the humans experience time sequences pass in the same order as they increase in entropy? Why do we only remember the past and not the future? Quite interestingly, these questions can be slightly answered by information theory and quantum entanglement, but that would definitely require another video. Until then, stay curious, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon.